Hey guys, welcome to my home. I wanted to walk you guys through the process today of making a two-point sling. Um, I've got an order here from a gentleman named Marcus Dayton. And Marcus has ordered uh, an OD green two-point sling with tri-glides, HK hooks, and QD swivels. And um, Marcus, this was the day that I made your sling. Um, anyways, um, the reason I'm doing this video is several people have have uh, sent me emails and questions asking, um, hey, can, can, can someone at Tier 1 System contact me about something or another? And I think to myself, they're probably a new subscriber to the channel or, you know, they've, they've come to the website not realizing that Tier 1 Citizen is just me. And then when I contact folks um, and I tell them it's me, so, you know, I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the only person you're ever dealing with at Tier 1 Citizen. Um, they're kind of they're kind of taken aback by that in a good way I think, and so I wanted to make sure that people understand Tier One Citizen is just me. I make slings at my dining table, which you'll see here in just a minute. This is what I consider my armory. It's not. It's it's by what I understand this used to be the nursery for the for the gentleman who who used to own this house or the, for for the gentleman who owns this house we rent. Um, this was the nursery. The master bedroom is right on the, on the other side of that wall. So this is like 10 foot by 10 foot. Um, but it works. I, I, well, I make it work. Um, but anyways, I keep, my, I keep my rules of webbing over there. And so for this one, we are doing a two point um, in OD green. And um, I'm just going to walk you guys through the process of how I do this. My wife and I were talking the other day. And she says, aren't you concerned about letting people see how you make the sling and I go no not really and she's and I said because China can't reproduce this she goes I'm not worried about China and and let me stop for a second the reason I say China can't reproduce this sure China could technically reproduce this but here's the deal it wouldn't really truly be a tier one citizen two-point sling a because I'm not the one that made it it would be China and secondly B because every component I use is 100% U.S. made. This webbing comes from Murdoch Webbing Company. This is U.S. made. My bungee is bungee brand. It's U.S. made. My thread comes from Indiana. It's U.S. made. My sewing awl, I forget where it comes from. It's also U.S. made. Um, the needles that I use, I mean every single component, the buckles, the triglides, the HK hooks, um, this is one of the HK hooks I use, whose name is there? Blue Forest Gear. Oh, yeah, it's got the American flag right there. And then also on there it says Made in the USA. And then the, um, I don't have any of these in the package, but these are BCM, these are BCM QDs. And I buy, usually I buy about $1,000 worth of these at a time and about six to $700 worth of these at a time. And the, uh, the buckles I use come from Farmingdale, New York, or something like that. They're, uh, they're, they're, I believe it's Duralast. It's either Duralast or YKK, but anyways, they're U.S. made. Um, so, and then of course my wife goes, yeah, but somebody else could copy your sling. She's right, but here's the deal. Nobody, nobody in this industry wants to do what I do. And I'm going to show you in just a minute what I do. People want to take and they want to make a sling by running it through a sewing machine, right? They don't want to actually hand stitch one stitch at a time to actually make a sling. That's how I make slings. See that right there? These are the prototypes of different things. Like this is the dog leash that I recently released. But these are prototypes. Here's a prototype you guys never even saw. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm not sure that I'm going to do that or not. But um, as you can see, there aren't that many prototypes here because I have a lot of experience doing this and I usually am able to figure out in a very short period of time what's going to work and what's not going to work. So let's get to this. As I said, I'm doing a two-point OD green triglides uh, tri HK hook and QD swivel. And I'm going to turn this over here because I don't want you guys seeing the, uh, the actual address of the customer because that ain't cool. Don't be that guy. I'm not doing anything with paracord today, what I wanted to show you. Hope the camera picks it up. USA. And um, it says ARM USA. I'm not really sure what ARM stands for. I buy this from 
from Paracord Planet. And this is uh, 500. Honestly, I don't know how long this is, but it is a massive roll of paracord, and uh, and it's USA made. Both sides say USA on it. So, guys, US made matters. It really matters. Those of you who email me uh, can attest to this. I say it all the time. Customer service is a big deal, and quality is a big deal to me. And US made really, really matters. All right, um, this is the uh, Bungie brand. Um, shock cord that I use. Bless you. Thank you. This is the uh, quarter inch bungee brand shock cord that I use. And um, the obvious reason that I use this is because it's made in the USA. And the other reason is it's very high quality. Um, it, you can tell this is high quality bungee when you use it. Anyways, there's a certain measurement of this that I use. Um, and um, I'm not going to tell you what it is because I'm not going to give everything away. All right, so there's the measurement for two point. I'm also doing a single point sling as well, but today's video, or this first video, is going to be on the two point. I melt the ends of the paracord and then I roll them in so that when so that when I insert it into the the webbing. This is tubular webbing, and as you can see, it's quite literally a tube, and it's just been flattened. I'm not really sure how they do it. I'm, I'm guessing they do it under steam, uh, under a high temperature steam and pressure, because this stuff is very flame resistant, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But basically, I insert this, and there's a dowel rod that seats it for me, and this took a bit of measuring to get. <laughs> It took a bit, yeah, it, it did. It took a bit of measuring to find that equation that actually worked. And then what I do is I take my water bottle, I put it here, and I take my blowtorch, and I put it on this side. All right, this is the sewing all that I use. It says Stewart Manufacturing Incorporated, made in USA. Couldn't tell you where they're made, but they're made in USA. Um, the thread that I use is 180 yards, uh, number 170, made in the USA, and I believe this comes from Indiana. Silver Creek Leather Company, Jeffersonville, Indiana. Booyah! <clears throat> America! This webbing has something that is similar to a ley line. You can see the three hash marks in the middle. And I use those hash marks as alignment tools. I basically pinch either side of it with my fingers, place the needle, and drive it straight through. This is a piece of rubber floor mat. I was going through needles a lot and I realized that the problem was that I was pushing the needle into wood as opposed to rubber and now I actually get a lot more life out of my needles. The reason I make that little, that little nub on the end is so you can see where it wears out my gloves there and there um, because the thread was always skipping through so this little knob actually helps me have something to hang on to because this is waxed thread and you can see how the wax builds up right there and that's that's wax residue there and um, and so it's hard to pull this thread through here sometimes so this gives me something to hang on to when I pull and I pull just enough thread through so that I can make the first knot. Well, basically, you pull up, you pull enough thread through to make the the stitching, the rows of stitching. You push it back in again. And um, I show this to you guys so you understand that that this is not machine made. When I say handmade, it's like literally handmade. The other thing that's cool about this is because I'm using one unbroken thread for the entire process, each and every stitch is actually one thread running through as opposed to with a sewing machine. With a sewing machine you have a top thread and a bottom thread and the item is being zipped through the machine. And so I can actually do in one row of stitching what a sewing machine would, would require. You'd have to like bar tack back and forth and you'd have to do X patterns to make sure that you have stitching that's going to hold for the life of the item. Well, this stuff is 
one solid unbroken thread. All right, when I get to the to this portion, I cut a generous tail and then I melt The reason I blow it out, I want the stitching to stop exactly at the edge of the webbing, and I'll show you why in just a moment. And then there's a certain amount of scrunching that I do to this, which I'm not going to show the camera. Once I have the prescribed amount of scrunches on there, I recenter the bungee. Needle is driven through. That is some seriously stiff bungee. You have to fight that thread through there. By the way guys, I guess I should tell you what it is I'm doing. Um, when I pull back through, and you'll notice the strain goes like that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the knot that I've just made and instead of leaving it on this surface, I'm actually dragging it back through so that the knot actually ends up inside of the bungee itself. It's locked inside. It's another thing that a sewing machine just can't do. Hand stitching matters. That's why I call this stitching rather than sewing. There's a certain prescribed amount of pulling that you do. If you pull too hard, it pops out on the other side, and then you've got to pull the knot back through and then recenter it. And then every once in a while you've got to take that little bit of wax and peel it off and get rid of it because it gets in the way. And by the way guys, if you're looking for something very specific to fit your need, I can work with you and typically, well up to date, I've yet to actually charge anything extra to any person for making a specific sling to, to fit their specific need. And I'll give you an example of the most recent one. A uh, police officer down in Florida contacted me and he has a uh, he has uh, the little B and T little nine millimeter PDW thing, and um, he had this absolute rolling wreck of a sling. I'm not going to say the name of the company because they're a very prominent company. And he said, "I need something that works better because what I've got just really isn't isn't meeting my needs." So we uh, we worked together to make him a variation of my single point sling that would actually fit his needs and I altered the loop, it's the, it's the, the para sling I altered the loop length specifically for him so that he could get exactly what it was that he needed and, um, and I, I had to do it all based on eyeballing because I don't have uh, B and T, uh, that, that particular little weapon, I don't have one of those so I basically had to zoom up the image of his weapon on the screen and then um, visually size everything on the screen. By the way, you'll notice how much I've got to put this into the flame just to get to the ends of this to melt. I flatten it underneath the bowl and now it's, now it's totally flattened out, right? So now there are these little raised ridges on here, so now what I do is I take those ridges off by doing that. And that's the finished product that you guys get when you buy the sling. And then we do this side. Anyways, I made this this sling for him. It was a, quite literally a bespoke pair sling specifically for his needs. Um, I did some measurements because everything I do is based on measurements that are reproducible so when I make that sling again if he orders another or another customer orders something I want to be able to reproduce that sling. And so um, took all the measurements and produced the sling, sent it to him, and it is exactly what he needs. What he had going before was a bit of a mess. And the frustration that I have in this industry of ours is that companies make things, um, they make a product that that is about um, about bulk production 
and they're not thinking about the customer, they're thinking about their ability to reproduce that particular sling. So what you end up with is a sling that does multiple things. So what, what you, really what you end up with is, in fact, I think I've got one here. here. This is one of the ones that's going out today. This is a Tier 1 Citizen um, one point uh, pair sling. And when, what you end up with on most single point slings is the sling goes on the person, but you'll notice how the connection point on my sling is right there, okay? And once this runs around the buffer tube of the AR-15, you end up with that rifle right there. So your, 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 your shoulder stock is like hovering right at your shoulder. What most other manufacturers end up giving you is, they end up giving you a single point sling with a dongle that's about that long. So your connection point is actually down here, not up here. And it doesn't matter how tight you get this, you've always got somewhere around five to six inches of dongle between where your sling terminates and where your weapon connects. And this right here is a big deal. And I know this to be fact because every one of my customers that buys the single point slings is just like, man, it's the best thing I've ever used. There's a reason for that, guys. Handmade. Guys, the reason that my customers keep coming back is they recognize quality when they see it. And I've got customers that have bought so many slings that they have now broken the double digit mark. Because whenever I see the name come across the screen, I automatically say to myself, oh yeah, that's, that's somebody that I know. And when I click on the name and I see the order history and it pulls up everything they've ever ordered, I mean, this one guy, one particular guy I reached out to it and I, I said, look, I don't want to intrude, but I'm, I'm impressed. You've bought a lot of slings. He says, oh yeah, I gift them to people. And I go, what, wait a minute, you gift them to people? He says, yeah, I give them to friends and family. And those friends and family come back and they buy slings. And guys, I'm humbled. Guys, I'm, I'm sitting at a $15 dining table from Habitat for Humanity on a folding chair because we are in a rental home. Um, there's nothing bougie about me, about what I do, and about, about any of this. I am, I am one guy making the best product I can by hand for you guys because I realize I make slings, not lollipops. And this is a life-saving tool. This is as important as the very rifle that it's going on to. So I pay very close attention. But anyways, let's rock on. All right, the next thing that I do in the process is... I have to take that stitching that I've done that's essentially top and bottom and I have to set it in. So what I do is I take the full line of scrunching on this end and I yank it down to the other end to create pre-folds in, uh, in the webbing. I take both ends, I hold it over my head and I flex my arms out while doing this to my wrists. And what I'm doing is I'm making a popping action that's pre-aging this sling and this this takes a while and what I'm doing is I'm pre-aging the sling and I'm verifying that my stitching isn't going to walk all the way through and come loose um, to date absolute honest truth to date I've had one and I was so shocked when I got that email that I remember looking at the email thinking is somebody fun in me I've sold them at classes I have no problem going to a class and selling slings to students that I'm going to be training right beside because I know the sling is not going to fail. I can't even quantify for you how low the number is of any level of issues that I've had and I've only had one failure and this, this, this guy said his, uh, the stitching came loose on one end. Before I could even get my hands on the sling, the dude cut into the sling and I'm like, oh you're killing me. I wanted to look at the sling. I wanted to look at that. I wanted to cut the sling apart and find where the failure point was. I didn't need him doing it. Um, I I choose to take I, I choose to take people at face value when they tell me something is you know going sideways. I really would have appreciated. This is my nice way of saying if you ever have an issue, just contact me because my stuff is lifetime warranty. No like zero static. No questions asked. Um, Anyway, so I made the guy another sling and sent it out immediately, but I really would have wanted to look at that sling. But what I've now done is, by stretching it, I have preset 
that stitching in. It's actually been driven into the webbing. And it is pretty much permanently locked in for the life of this sling. Um, when I was actually doing these, I actually made a dog leash. And back then, you know, when our, when our dog was still with us, um, he was a big boy. And he pulled on that leash every single day, constantly, the leash was being maxed out. And it was essentially a two-point sling is really all it was. It was, two, it was a two-point sling with a loop on one end and an HK hook on the other. And I hooked it to my dog because I wanted to test the actual stitching. And what a better way to do it than to have your dog constantly max out the stitching over and over and over again. The bungee never failed. The stitching never failed. And I ended up giving that, that, uh, that leash to my friend Zeke for his dog, dogs. And um, that's, that leash is still going strong. Anyways, uh, you'll notice that a lot of what I'm doing is just eyeballing. Uh, like when I was when I first did the measurements for this, I just did that because this is actually a prescribed measurement. My arms extend all the way out, the webbing goes across my sternum, and I max my shoulders back. I basically pop them back. And what's left in this hand is the full length of what I need. I cut it and I throw it around my neck. When I'm doing a PDW sling, it's the same measurement except, and I hope the camera picks it up, now my hands go like this inward and that's my measurement and then um, two point and single point are the same exact measurement length PDW slings are a little bit shorter which is that moving the arms in and um, when I'm when I'm just lacing them up to send them out to you guys it's mostly just eyeballing and what's really cool is when I started selling these and started sending them out I started asking the customers hey how was my measurement and it was spot on because remember guys, I'm huge and I set things based on my measurements, based on my preferences. So when people get them and it works for them, it makes me realize that I'm, I'm thinking along the lines of basically my average customer. So that's the, there's a two point saying, I take a little piece of, of a ranger band, which is basically bicycle inner tube, and I put it over. And then I take the pick sheet that I've used to make the sling, fold it in half, drop the sling into it, and then I drop it into a shipping package, seal the end, and mail it out to you guys. And um, you guys are buying a lot of these and I really appreciate it, but that's how I make a Tier 1 Citizen 2 point sling. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get your guns out, get your slings out, and practice. Have a good one.